Knock a doodle do. Ah, oh, good morning, Coach Lasso. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 heartwarming Ted Lasso moments. I, I, I'll say this though. I really enjoyed getting to spend this time with you, Trent. You actually mean that, don't you? <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Who's ready to go show everything what we got? Woo! Thank you, Dan. For this list, we're looking at moments from this Apple TV Plus comedy series that showed us there just might be hope for humanity. Since there will be spoilers, we strongly recommend you go watch the show if you haven't already. Which Ted Lasso moment brought out your inner goldfish? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Biscuits with the Boss I brought you a little something. Oh, yeah. Cookies. <laughs> or as y'all call them here, biscuits, right? One of the show's funniest running gags is also among the most heartwarming. Ted attempts to start a tradition in the sophomore episode by bringing Rebecca a box of cookies, or biscuits as you will fondly come to call them. Rebecca is hesitant at first, but she has a hard time resisting the delicious looking treats. Where did you get these? Well, I'm glad you like them. You know what? I'll start bringing these to you every morning. Call Biscuits with the Boss. That really isn't necessary. Okay, well mark this down as the first time we disagree then. Something similar can be said about Rebecca's relationship with Ted throughout the first season. While it will take more than some biscuits to win Rebecca over, this is just one of many kind gestures that go a long way. You're gonna show up tomorrow with biscuits, aren't you? Oh, come on now. I would not bet on that. <laughs> I mean, unless you want to win a buttload of money. <laughs> High five, tree. Woo! It's only made sweeter knowing that Ted made the shortbread confections himself packing each pink box with care, much like his biscuits. You just want to eat Ted up after seeing this. Number 9. Nate's Promotion Who the hell are you? Oh, hi, hello, I'm, uh, I'm Will. I'm the new clubhouse attendant. No, you're not. I'm the clubhouse attendant. The season 1 finale ultimately brings more defeat than triumph for the team. At least Nathan walks away with a win, however. Seeing that somebody else has fulfilled his duties as Kitman before the climactic game, Nate fears the worst. You shrew, you did this, didn't you? Why so hostile, Nathan? Right, I'll tell you why. You know my name. Well, I had to spell it correctly for your contract. Nate is prepared to tell Rebecca off, until Ted clarifies that it's the opposite of what he thinks. He's been promoted to assistant coach. Hey, dog, you haven't been fired. It's worse. You've been promoted! In surprise party fashion, the team rushes into the room, commencing a celebration worthy of Nate the Great. Ted and Coach Beard commemorate the moment by giving Nate his own whistle, although he probably should have picked another time to blow it. By the power vested in me by the Associated Football Club of Richmond, I now pronounce you Coach Nate. <laughs> For any hard worker who's ever felt undervalued, moments like this show that passion can pay off. Number 8. Roy's Injury He's not getting up. Now this looks serious. Season 1 sees Roy can't come to terms with getting older and accepting his feelings for Keely. His character arc reaches a tragic yet touching turning point during the big game after suffering what looks like a career-ending injury. Roy leaves the field without the use of a stretcher as the crowd cheers him on. As Ken comes off, he claps the fans in gratitude. Kent has been a fan favorite because he always left everything he had out on the pitch, and he did so tonight. Once he's alone in the locker room, the hot-headed Roy lets his defenses down. Roy doesn't want anyone to see this side of him, including Keeley. Got that back here during the game. I told you, you have to get out. When she enters the room and wraps her arm around him, though, Keeley makes it clear that she's not going anywhere. Roy finally lets Keeley in, finding that perhaps there can be more to his life than just football. Number 7. Nate Roasts the Team I can't say this here. But I need to hear it. I agree. That's why you're gonna do it. Are you drunk? Nate has always felt invisible at work, but Ted comes to see his potential for greatness. When Nate wrote down his suggestions on how to improve the team, he wasn't prepared to share them in front of everybody. Had he known, Nate might have filtered some of his thoughts. Um, Sam. Oh, no. You're constantly getting beat on the wings. It's because you're indecisive. You second guess more than a shitty psychic. <laughs> the only African I know more in prison by their own thoughts is goddamn Nelson Mandela. We're glad Ted put him on the spot, though, as it leads to one of the show's funniest and most oddly inspiring moments. 
the pre-game talk immediately turns into a roast, although humor often makes the truth easier to digest. Uh, Rojas. Woo. Roast me, amigo. Right, you say that football is life, right? Football is life. Yeah, well, then your defense is death. Oh. The only person I've seen lose a man more often is Carrie f***ing Bradshaw. Nate's words ignite the team's spirit and Roy's anger, but in a positive way. Most of all, it gives Nate the confidence boost he sorely needed. But your speed and your smarts were never what made you who you are. It's your anger. That's your superpower. Sometimes, motivation comes from the most unlikely places. Number six, the lasso way. Oh, no, I know, Tramp. Yeah, he's a tough cookie. Ready? Yeah, that's okay. You know what you do with tough cookies, don't you? No. Dip them in milk. From the moment he arrives in the UK, virtually everyone doubts Ted's ability to coach the team. Reporter Trent Krim is one of the toughest eggs to crack. Spending the day with Ted, Krim finds the coach's methods unconventional yet intriguing. Now, I'm going to say this again, just so you didn't think it was a mistake the first time I said it. For me, success is not about the wins and losses. It's about helping these young fellas be the best versions of themselves on and off the field. In the end, Krim isn't entirely convinced that Ted will lead his team to victory. However, he's ready to root for Ted every step of the way. And yes, he's in over his head. He insisted twice that he didn't care if Richmond won or lost. But if the lasso way is wrong, it's hard to imagine being right. Krim can see that Ted throws his heart into the game and pretty much every other facet of his life. That doesn't always lead to success, but Krim recognizes that it should count for something. If even a cynical journalist can succumb to Ted's charms, maybe everyone else can learn to appreciate the Lasso way, Rebecca included. And though I believe that Ted Lasso will fail here and Richmond will suffer the embarrassment of relegation, I won't gloat when it happens, because I can't help but root for him. Number 5. The Story of Hank In a moment that mixes tragedy with dark comedy, Danny accidentally sends the Richmond mascot to doggy heaven. While everyone is shaken by Earl's death, the coach manages to deliver some of that signature lasso comfort. Well, when I was three years old, I got attacked by our neighbor's dog. I don't remember it happening, but my mother said it was pretty, pretty scary. I do remember being afraid of dogs while growing up, though. At a press conference, Ted reflects on a childhood incident that ignited his fear of dogs. Years later, the dog who attacked Ted loses one of his owners and is left neglected. And so I started looking after him, you know, feeding him, taking him on walks, playing fetch, all that fun stuff. Eventually, Mr. Grady's son moved his dad into a nursing home, and he asked if I wanted to keep Hank, and I was like, yeah, heck yeah. And then a year or so after that, we had to put Hank to sleep. The aging dog thus becomes a member of Ted's family, although he's put to sleep after a year. Ted goes on to discuss how sometimes the most unlikely things help you grow as a person. For Ted, it was Hank the dog. I think those things come into our lives to help us get from one place to a better one. And I hope we helped Earl do just that. For Richmond, Ted has helped the team get to a better place, and vice versa. Number four. Ted, let's go. While Ted Lasso is about perseverance, it's also about learning to live with your failures. Every day, I wake up hoping that I'll feel the way I felt in the beginning. But, but maybe that's just what marriage is, right? Losing a game is one thing, but letting go of a spouse is another. Being an eternal optimist, Ted has a difficult time accepting that his marriage is hanging on by a thread. While Ted and Michelle still work as a loving parental unit, they no longer work as romantic partners. Michelle, there's something I could do or something I could say that would make you be happy. Just being with me, I'd do it. I'd do it in a nanosecond. Seeing the pain that Michelle is concealing, Ted comes to terms with what he has to do. It's bittersweet watching Ted let Michelle go, but ultimately heartwarming knowing that both are going to be in better places. You don't have to keep trying anymore. It's okay. I'm gonna be okay. Separation is never easy. Although, having a close friend to share a beer with can help soften the blow. Number three, Ted's panic attack. Just because somebody beams with positivity does not mean that they're not combating sadness on the inside. The stress of signing his divorce papers gets to Ted at a karaoke bar where he suffers a panic attack.
after Rebecca sheds her icy exterior with a performance of Let It Go, she comes to Ted's aid. Ted, it's okay. It's okay. Try to breathe. I can't, I can't. I can't, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the tables are turned, with Ted feeling lost and Rebecca emerging as a guiding light. Rebecca can relate to what Ted is going through, as she is still not over her failed marriage. I'm going crazy. <laughs> no more than anyone else. <laughs> there we go. Although Rebecca once saw Ted merely as a means to exact revenge against her ex-husband, she's come to see him as a true friend. It's tear-jerking seeing Ted break down, but so uplifting watching Rebecca's heart grow. Number two, sad together. Hey, y'all played a heck of a game out there. We may not have won, but y'all definitely succeeded. Victory appears to be in Richmond's grasp until Jamie makes an extra pass that secures the win for Manchester City. It's encouraging knowing that Ted's team spirit rubbed off on Jamie, although it comes at Richmond's expense. The team may have lost, but Ted isn't at a loss for words. Let's be sad now, let's be sad together, and then we can be a gosh darn goldfish. Ted tells the team that it's better to be sad with your loved ones than to be sad and alone. And I want you to be grateful that you're going through this sad moment with all these other folks. Because I promise you, there is something worse out there than being sad, and that is being alone and being sad. Being such a good sport, Ted also congratulates Jamie in a letter after his father scorned him for passing. While Ted is willing to resign after this failure, Rebecca gives him the motivation to stay and make the ultimate comeback next season. You listen to me, Coach Lasso. You are not going anywhere because we have work to do. Next season. Win or lose, at least Richmond will go through it together. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Ted forgives Rebecca. I have something I need to tell you. Mm, deja vu. Overcome with guilt, Rebecca finally tells Ted why she hired him. In another show, it would take at least an episode for the characters to reconcile after such a bombshell. Ted, I lied to you. I hired you because I wanted this team to lose. I wanted you to fail. And I sabotaged you every chance I've had. Ted forgives Rebecca on the spot, however. As surprised as Rebecca is, this moment isn't out of character for Ted. I forgive you. You what? Why? Divorce is hard. And it doesn't matter if you're the one leaving or if you're the one who got left. It makes folks do crazy things. While Ted is visibly saddened, he knows that Rebecca's apology is genuine. Some recognize Rebecca as a villain, but Ted sees that she's just a person going through a hard time. Now that she's owning up to her mistakes, Ted has no reason to hold a grudge. Yeah, but you and me, we're okay. Ted, come on, just shake this hand. My arm's starting to get... Ted and Rebecca have changed each other in unexpected ways. Ted is grateful for that, and Rebecca can no longer deny how much she values his friendship. You know, I think that if you care about someone and you got a little love in your heart, there ain't nothing you can't get through together, you know what I'm saying? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.